Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. Y'all, let's do some really fun and springy paper crafting. Stay tuned. So if you have been with me for any amount of time, you will often hear me say that packaging is a gift. And that's because it is. Why do we go to the store and buy bags and boxes and all the decorative pieces that we need to make what we want to give pretty? Because we need those things. And any time that you can give someone a gift of beautiful packaging, guys, it really is appreciated. And I can't tell you how many times I have given packaging as a gift and just blown someone away because they might not think they have the skills to make it. So you are able to gift your friends and family the gift of beautiful packaging. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. Not only are we going to make some beautiful packaging, but we're going to package it beautifully. And then it'll be all ready to present or sell. So here is what I'm talking about. Isn't this box just absolutely full of spring? The colors are just beautiful. And when you open it, what I have in here are just some handmade bags and coordinating tags. And we have a set of three in each one of these boxes, but the box itself is beautiful. And then we have these gorgeous, gorgeous bags. And so I'm going to hold them like this so that you can really get a good look at all of this goodness. And then we have our coordinating tags. So what we're giving is a gift of gift packaging. And so the way that I'm doing mine is I am actually tucking the tags inside one of the bags that I'm taking them and putting them in my box that I have cut out an acetate opening so that you can very easily see what this box has in store for you. Guys, I'm telling you that this will be one well-received gift. And you know what time it is? It is time to make it. All right, guys, so to make our project, we're going to need a piece of acetate that measures three by four. We're going to need three pieces of white cardstock that measure four by two and a quarter. We will need six squares that measure two by two. We will need two strips that measure three and a quarter by one and a quarter. Two strips of decorative paper that measure six and a quarter by one and a quarter. Two strips of decorative paper that measure six and a quarter by three and three quarters. We will need three pieces of decorative paper and I'm using just regular text weight paper and this paper measures eight by 11. And then to make our box, we're going to need a piece of heavyweight cardstock. I'm using poster board that measures nine and a half by 12. So I have already made two of my bags and two of my little tags to go with it. And what I'm using for the front of my bags are these beautiful cut aparts from Prima. And I absolutely love how these look because they really do help to make these bags really, really unique and festive. So I am going to bring in my scoreboard and we're going to go ahead and make our third bag. So with your paper in on the 11 inch side, we are going to score this at three and a half, at five, at eight and a half, and at 10. Then I'm going to rotate it to the eight inch side and we're going to score this at one and one half and at seven and a half. And then we can fold and burnish all of our score marks. And this really is an easy piece of project, but as you saw from what I showed you at the beginning, the end result is just so gorgeous and so seasonal and festive. So you can make this for any season, any reason, any gender by changing the paper, changing your cut aparts. It is that simple. Okay, so once you have folded and burnished all of those score marks, you're going to have two corner pieces that you'll need to get rid of on the glue flap. And you'll know it's the glue flap because it'll be on the end next to one of the one and a half inch panels that you scored. And then you'll have a wide panel on this end. So you know this can only be your glue panel. So what I'm going to do is remove these corner pieces.
And this narrow strip here is the fold over piece at the top. We're going to go along the bottom and just do an angle cut all the way across wherever we have a score mark. And then I'm just going to reduce these two tabs in size. And because these bags are lightweight bags, you have choices on what you can use to put them together. Normally when I'm putting a bag together, I use glue because if it's a weight bearing bag, glue is the best thing for me to hold it together. But these bags are really like penny candy bags, if you guys remember those. And I am going to use my tape runner to put it down. And you can also put it down with double stick tape, but I'm going to use my tape runner. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place my tape on that little half inch flap, fold that over, and that just gives us a cute decorative finish to our bag. And then this is my glue flap. So wherever the glue flap is going to hit, that's going to be the back of the bag. So this is the back of my bag. This is the front of my bag. So on the front of my bag, I'm just going to go ahead and place down some tape. You can wait to place this, this if you want. I'm gonna do it right now. So when I place the tape on that flap, I'm placing it on the inside. Now I'm going to flip it over and place tape on my little tabs that I reduced in size. So we're going to have tape here on the inside, tape here on the outside. Then on my glue flap, I'm actually going to place the tape on the glue flap on the inside as well. How you tape yours is really up to you, but this is just the way that I find works best for me. So now that I have all of my tape down, I'm just going to flip this over find one of my sweet little cut aparts and I think I'm going to go with this one because it really works with this color scheme and what I want to make sure that I'm doing when I put this down wherever I've placed this tape that's the panel on which I want to place this cut apart so I'm going to take that cut apart place it right there and now we can put our bag together so this time I'll be putting my bag together by putting the adhesive flap on the outside. So I'm just making sure that I have everything matched very nicely on this. Then I can take this, fold in those side pieces, fold the back piece in that does not have any glue on it, and then I can fold over that front piece. And now we have our bag. So what I'm going to do is take my bone folder and just go on the inside, get everything nice and stuck. So now that we have everything nice and stuck, I'm going to take my bag and just start pinching down the side. And all I'm doing is pinching until I get to the bottom and it'll look like this. Then I'll take that bottom and I'm just going to pinch it closed. And we have what looks like a normal lunch style paper bag. I'm going to use my big old spatula just to go over that and really clean everything up. So now we have bag number three. And aren't they just gorgeous? So I'm going to take my bags and set them to the side. Now we're going to go ahead and make our tag. So I have three of these that measure four by two and a quarter. All I'm going to do is take this and fold it just like this. I'll bring in my two little squares, add some adhesive to the back. And now I can place this like that. I'll flip this one over. We will add our adhesive to this piece. And we'll get it stuck. So that's just a fun and quick little way to make some tags to go along with your little gift set that you might be giving someone. Even if we didn't box that, even if we decided to take this as is and place it in a bag, this is gorgeous. But we are going to box it. 
So I'm going to move this out of the way, bring our box in, and our box piece measures nine and a half by 12. And on the 12 inch side, we are going to score this at one and a half, at five and a half, seven, and 11. Then we're going to rotate this to the nine and a half inch side, and we're going to score at one and a half, rotate it to the opposite nine and a half inch side, and score at one and a half. And then once you have all of your scores folded and burnished, you're going to have a narrower flap here than you have here. This is the fold over flap for the top of the box. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to come in, go to that score mark and drag straight down and then angle. We'll do the same thing over here. So we will go to the score mark, drag straight down and then angle. And then we'll release these center tabs by cutting like that. Then when we come to this end, we're going to cut in this direction. So we have it looking like this. You're cutting in this direction where you have the wide flap, center flap you cut out, narrow flap you cut straight across. So now we're going to come back to the wide flap here at the top and we'll cut straight down. I'm going to go ahead and angle that and I'll angle this one as well. And then we'll come over to this one, cut straight down, cut straight down. So now I'm going to just go ahead and angle my center tabs and reduce them. And so far your piece should look like this. So on the end where you have the narrow flap, we are going to go ahead and just do a deep angle cut there. And then an angle here. I'll rotate it to this side. We're going to do another deep angle cut and then an angle there. So now your piece should look like this. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tape runner and I'm going to take these little flaps and just fold them in. You can remove them, but they'll give you a little bit more stability on that flap if you just leave them. So I just folded mine in and now we have our piece that looks like this. And at this point, this is where we want to start placing these pieces. So I am going to take the two pieces that measure six and a quarter by three and three quarters, add some tape. If you happen to have a Xyron or a sticker maker, anything that'll put adhesive on the back, that's great for this but I'm just going to do mine using tape. So I'm going to take this and try to get it centered. It won't be perfect, but it'll be good enough. So then I'll do the same thing with this one. Take this piece and we'll try to get it stuck centered. And then I have my two longer pieces here. And these pieces are one and a quarter by six and a quarter. And I am going to take my tape, place some tape on these, and just place this down trying to get it in the center. And don't you just love these springy colors? 
So I'll take this piece, do the same thing, and this piece is going to go here on this panel. We won't be putting anything on the fold over panel here because that'll go inside of our box. So then we need to take our last two panels, and these panels are three and three quarters by one and a fourth, and we're going to place them right here. So I'll take my tape. And I'm just going to place it right there. Then I'll rotate this piece. And then I'll place this piece right here. And so when we're done, our piece is going to look like this. So now we need to go ahead and cut the opening. And the opening is cut on the side where you've got those deep angles. So I'll be using a template to cut out my opening. And the template measure is two and a half by four. Now, if you don't have a die cutting system, this is a great way to cut an opening in your project. So I do want my opening to go down at an angle like that. So I've placed it down and I'm just going to take my finger blade and trim away around the chipboard. And so you're going to have an opening that looks like that. So then I'm going to take my acetate piece and we'll be placing the acetate piece on the inside. But you will need to take the acetate and just cut on the diagonal because we are placing this at an angle so those points can get in the way of your score mark unless you trim it. So I trimmed it just like that. So now I'm going to take my glue, place some glue right along the edge, and then we'll place this down and we'll have a beautiful acetate opening. And this process really is a process for those of you who don't have die cutting systems and don't want to invest in one. This is a great way to get the acetate look or the cutout look if you don't happen to have those systems. So then I'm going to bring in my paper towel and what I'm doing is I'm just pushing the glue away from the acetate opening. And now we have a beautiful acetate opening on this box and we can put our box together. So the way that we're going to do this is we're first going to take these two flaps here in the front and I am just going to take my glue, place my glue on the flaps and we'll get this front part closed. And then I'm just going to use my bone folder to get that stuck. Then I'll take my glue, place my glue on the center tabs. And then I'm going to glue the center tabs to this part of the box. So I am going to take and then I'll just bring this side up. And we'll match it and get it stuck. I'm going to fold that backwards so I can go in there and just get that nice and stuck. And so now we should be able to, to take our lid and just put it inside our box. And there we have a beautiful, beautiful box to house our packaged gift. So I am going to bring in my three tags, place them in a bag, and this bag says Paris. Isn't that adorable? Then we're going to take these and just put them in the box, close the box, 
And just like that, y'all, we have another beautiful gift of packaging that we could give someone, sell it at a craft fair, whatever it is you choose to do with it, keep it for yourself and just have these little beauties lying around your craft room. Great way to give the gift of packaging. So, all right, guys, we are finished. And wasn't that a super easy project, but just so stinking cute? What an awesome way to give the gift of packaging. As you can see, it doesn't take much. You can make these larger, you can make them even smaller, you can make them thinner, but they will be so appreciated and so well received. So, so I am going to give you one final look at some of these cuties because I just love the way they turned out. So if you're able to find some fun, festive paper, you are going to love this project just as much as I do. So guys, I hope that you have liked this project. And if you have, please hit the like button if you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join my online crafting family. As always, you guys be safe, be kind, happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.